Hello and welcome back to the video series where we are providing the high level overview of the textbook Blueprint Reading Construction Drawing for the Building Trades. So this video is about chapter 12, that is the final chapter in the book. And this is about construction business environment. So in general, many skilled and experienced professionals are finding themselves on their own, seeking employment for the first time after being forced to abandon the safety of an organization that regularly deliver their paycheck each month. As a result, an increasing number of professionals are rethinking their employment strategy. Cash flow, health insurance, and retirement dominate this strategy. For seasoned veterans, there are also growing concerns over job satisfaction, location, and stress. There are seductive attractions to being an independent contractor, such as being your own boss, flexible hours, and uh, seeing the family whenever you like. But before making a final determination to start a construction business, there are some things that need to be considered. So the first one is, do you have the necessary qualifications to start a construction business? Having a few years of on-site experience in construction is extremely important. Do you possess any business training? Do you know anything about running a business? Starting a construction business from scratch is costly. You need to know how much it will cost to get the business up and running, and a sound business plan is crucial. Starting a construction business is not a nine to five job. You will need someone who is willing to spend 12 to 15 hours a day to get the business off the ground. Do research to ensure that the city where you live is not unindicted with this type of business. Discuss with others in the trade uh, the potential for success of a construction business in your area. Try to determine if there is enough work to support for your new company or if there is a niche that you can fill. Make your dream of starting a construction company come true by doing adequate research and by being prepared. So let's talk about preparing a business strategy and a business plan. That is the key to success in any business. We already know that. The importance of planning cannot be overemphasized. It may take two or three weeks to complete a good plan. Most of the time is spent in research and reevaluating your ideas and assumptions. <clears throat> Taking an objective look at the business plan will identify areas of weakness and strength, pinpoint needs that might otherwise be overlooked, and spot opportunities early. It provides a roadmap to make sure you are going where you want to go to achieve your business objectives. A business plan is an operating tool which, when properly used, can manage the business and work effectively toward its success. Moreover, lenders require one. A well-written business plan communicates ideas to others and provides the ba basis for a financial proposal. It will also determine the feasibility of a project and lay out the action necessary to complete it. A good plan can help convince a bank or potential investor that you are worthy of assisting in funding this new venture. The plan itself may not get you funding since it's very difficult to find capital for startup businesses. As the business owner, you are expected to have sufficient startup capital from your savings or from a bank loan based on income other than the business. Putting a successful business plan together is both an art and a science. While there are a number of ways to provide a business plan, the following outline presents key elements to consider in developing your business plan. 
So you need to have an executive summary, then company description, mission and vision, management, and market and service offered. And let's um, take a look at each of those. So the executive summary provides an overview of the business plan and should not exceed two pages. Then mission, vision, and description. That's uh, in any organizational venture, the first step is to develop a realistic vision for the business. As far as the management, um, even if you're one person operation, a key ingredient of your potential business success is the strength of your management skills. And market and services offered. So you need to describe in depth the services offered, the market for your service, how you fit into that market and your plans for achieving your share of the market. The successful business plan is basically a written document that describes the business, its objectives, strategies, market, and the financial overcast. Um, excuse me, financial forecast. Explain the type of company and services to be provided. If this is an existing business, give its history. If it's a new business, describe the product and or service and note some of the qualifications to start this business. Also explain why this business is needed and what um, its chance for success is. Describe any unique features that will attract customers to this business. So let's talk about the financial plan. This section of your business plan is critical. The credibility of your projections is essential to establishing the likelihood or of success or failure for your business. Investors and lenders will use the information in this section to evaluate the financial prospects of your business. Factors for success. There are many factors that will impact the chances of a new company's success. They will require devoting considerable considerable effort in personal networking with attorney groups and other potential clients in your area. Some of these factors include extensive network. A single contact may yield a lucrative contract, but it takes a strong network to yield a continuing stream of work. Excellent communication skills. Most executive level professionals have excellent verbal skills and this ability is one of the primary determinants for achieving success. Writing skills are an entirely different matter and can be a major challenge to those who largely depend on others to put pen to paper. People skills. Fundamental to any successful business is relating effectively to others clients, employees, suppliers, and consultants. Successful business people invest in developing their communication and interpersonal skills um, as well. Then you need to work hard in practice. Uh, in private practice, there is some flexibility in work hours, but this is no eight to five job and it's a hard focused work and effort are needed to build a practice. Self-direction. Some people have great difficulty in working on their own initiative and need a structured environment to perform. Independence can be freeing, but it can also be lonely. Some people require daily face-to-face -face interaction. This is especially true of individuals who work out of their home office instead of renting space in the corporate office park. Marketing skills. Some people are shy and introverted, but if you are not willing to engage in relentless self-promotion, you may not be able to bring in sufficient new business to succeed. Identify your target market. These should be specific target markets that will need your services and will be willing to pay you for it. Financial security. 
owning your own business is one of the better ways to gain wealth, provided you know what is required. Starting a business is risky, but the chances of success are better if you understand the challenges you will meet and resolve them before you start. Likewise, it's essential that the new startup have a financial capability to survive the dry periods, which could easily last a year or more. Otherwise, it may be prudent to reconsider the decision to be an independent contractor. In addition to the various bureaucratic and legal hurdles that an entrepreneur must overcome to incorporate and register a new firm, there are procedures as well as time and cost involved in launching a contracting firm. These need to be examined before attempting to launch such a venture. So let's talk about startup cost and capitalization. Startup expense can basically be segregated into investigatory and pre-opening cost. These costs can be incurred over a period of several weeks to several years, depending upon the type of industry under construction and the length of the search process. Startup costs would normally include any amounts paid or incurred in connection with investigating the creation or acquisition of an active trade or business, or two, the actual creation of a new trade or business. Uh, so uh, not only the uh, rules that are vague, uh, but also various stages of the startup process determine the tax classification of an expense. So please always consult with the uh, legal professional. In any case, there will be many startup expenses before you even begin operating your business. It would um, be um, expenses to establish, operate, and succeed in setting up a business without adequate funding. It is important to estimate these expenses accurately and then to plan on how to raise the required capital. Often, first-time business owners fail to consider or greatly misjudge the amount of money needed to get their small business off the ground, and they fail to include a contingency amount to meet unforeseen expenses. Consequently, they fail to secure sufficient financing to carry their business through the period before it reaches its break-even status and starts to make money. To avoid being undercapitalized, you will need to adequate, ad, adequate cost planning during your pre-launch phase. Most experts recommend that startup funding be adequate to cover operating expenses for six months to a year. At the very least, you will need several months to find customers to get established. But to determine how much um, in financing to seek, you will need to develop detailed cost projections. Experts suggest a two-part process. First, you need to develop uh, an estimate of your one-time startup costs. And then second, put together a projection of your overhead and operating expenses for at least six months of operation. Performing these two exercises will help you ensure that you put into place the necessary financial cushion to start and stay in business. The next one, let's talk about business forms, taxes, licenses, permits, and insurance. As a business owner, you are obliged to understand and comply with government laws and regulations that apply to your business and are designed to protect you, your customer, and any employees. Having taken the decision to start a new business, you may now need to obtain a number of licenses and permits from federal, state, and local government. Since licensing and permit requirements for small businesses can vary from one jurisdiction to another, it is important that you contact your state and local government to determine the specific obligations of your new business. 
For example, in California, you would need to take the contracting license exam before you can get licensed. Let's talk about creating a professional image. So owning your business is one of the better ways uh, to make money and to uh, get, um, get wealthy and also to gain the personal satisfaction uh, provided you know what is required. So, but you really need to understand the difficulties and challenges that you will face and you will work out as many of them as possible before commencement. So uh, when you try to market yourself or sell the um, services, professional performance means much more than doing your job effectively. The way you conduct yourself in a business environment not only reflects your position within a company, but impacts your chance for career growth. Many people are unsure of the proper protocol for various situations in a business setting. Most potential clients can decide within minutes whether to trust you or your employees or not. Trust is pivotal in establishing relationship that can uh, ultimately lead to business partnerships. Awkward introductions, weak handshakes, poor communication, ineffective meetings, or a lack of consideration can negatively affect your career and business relationships. When all um, else is equal, good manners can be your greatest strength. So when you're trying to identify and track sources for leads, there are many methods to do so. And depending on whether your business is a one-person organization or a well-organized firm with several employees, uh, there are still a lot of ways to find those leads. So the bids, contracts, and payments is another critical critically important part of the business. So construction jobs are usually awarded on the basis of a bid or by negotiation. The contractor will essentially estimate the cost to execute the project and then add a certain person percentage for profit and contingencies. But in the final analysis, your rates should be set by the logic of most businesses. It should reflect what the market will bear. In any case, ensure that you read the contracts thoroughly. Many contractors and subcontractors often sign prepared contracts without adequately reading them or having an attorney reviewing them. And that is a mistake. You really need to read what you sign. Many contractors are uncomfortable in dealing with the paperwork associated with the job. But unfortunately, contracting is about contracts and contracts include paperwork. <laughs> so as much as 50% of all profits made or lost on construction projects can be a result of managing the contract properly. So, and this concludes chapter 12. And actually this is the end of the textbook. I wish you the best of luck in all your endeavors. Thank you so much. I will see you in the new videos.